Um, first, I just want to thank Adam and Dan for bringing me out here. Um, you know, I mean, this is pretty awesome to see this many coaches um, on a Friday and a Saturday uh, out to a clinic. Most of the time when I talk to organizations about trying to do a coaching clinic, um, they're worried if they can get 10 or 11 coaches out at one time, um, regardless of how big the organization is. Um, so kudos to you guys for being out here um, and to Basketball Manitoba for being able to pull off a clinic this big. Um, before I start, uh, as I tell all my players, um, whether it's I'm doing a clinic or whether I'm working with my own team, if you have a question, I know it's a little bit hard because um, there's a lot of you up there, um, but if you have a question, if I say something that you don't understand, somebody stop me um, so I can re-explain and make sure you understand. Uh, again, as I tell my players, I can't read your minds. I don't know what you guys understand, what your background is, etc. Uh, so the only way that I can confirm that somebody doesn't understand what I'm talking about is if somebody asks a question so I can re-explain it because I guarantee you that if one of you has a question about something that I'm saying somebody else has the same question all right so somebody be the guy to raise your hand get my attention and I'll try to do a better job explaining um, what I'm going to talk about this morning okay it's we put together a uh, kind of an offensive philosophy more than a system uh, it's kind of my take a little bit on what the Spurs do offensively, okay? So Popovich has a saying, okay, that he wants to turn good shots into great shots, all right? What I say is I want to turn small advantages into big advantages, okay? So the Saab offensive system, that's what it stands for, all right? Small advantage, big advantage, all right? Um, <coughs> excuse me. So there's four basic rules that kind of govern everything that I try to do offensively with my teams. All right, so the first one is any action that you do on offense, essentially what you're trying to do is disorganize the defense. Okay, so a good defensive team wants to keep their shape. Okay, essentially for, you know, our purposes, you know, a general shell kind of shape, whether you're going to deny, whether you're going to, you know, sag off, however you're going to play defense. But that's essentially what the defense wants to do. Okay, is they want to keep their shape. They want to keep players between the offensive player and the basket. All right. Every action that you do, whether it's a dribble handoff, a screen, a cut, on-ball screen, etc., all you're trying to do is to disorganize that defense. Okay, And that's kind of the difference to me between how I'm trying to teach basketball and how uh, some of the coaches that I'm familiar with uh, teach in terms of they just want to run a play. Okay, So if I can run the exact same thing that somebody else is going to run, but we have a slightly different philosophy on it. All right, so just give me uh, four of you guys. Two, two red, two white. I just want to show. Actually, give me six of you guys. Three red, three whites. Hustle up. One ball. Let's go. Six guys. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Down here. Let's go. Uh, whites. Give me a ball on top. Give me a screener, and then give me somebody in the corner. All right, so an on-ball screen being set right here. Come come to the strong side. Set it on the other side. No, 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 you're fine. Come like you're setting the screen right here. You're just going to walk through it right now. So you're setting an on-ball screen right here. All right, so most... Actually, I changed my mind. Go on that side. Get off and help. All right, so most teams will say you run a play, and your play is you're going to have a high on-ball screen. Most most plays are designed for these two players, okay? So they're going to come off, and the point guard now, he's rolling to the basket, and the point guard's looking either to get to the basket or he's looking for the roller, okay? And that's their play. And then if we don't get that, let's say, you know, they switch maybe, and there's not a big mismatch, so he can't get anywhere, so he brings it back out, and now we're going to run a different play. And then we're going to run another play, okay? I know up here you guys have FIBA rules, so you can't run plays on end, okay? But in the States... Most states don't have a shot clock, so when I coached in, I coached high school basketball in Utah, we had teams running flex for a minute, minute and a half at a time, just screen down, screen across, screen down, screen across, until somebody was open for a layup, okay? So all they were concerned about is running their play. They weren't using screens. So when I'm running something like this, get back to the start again, okay? When we set this screen, okay, we're just setting this because it gives us a small advantage. Regardless of what they do defensively, 
we're going to get a small advantage off this. Okay? So it might be that he goes under the screen. Okay, our post is back. So now he's open right here. Okay? So if he's a shooter, we've got this shot. If he's not a shooter, maybe he hesitates, makes the defense believe he's a shooter so that he can get an angle to the basket. Okay? Maybe they switch. Just switch. Okay? Now we've got a small advantage. Okay? He's still defended. Okay, but theoretically, I don't know these guys at all, but theoretically, if we've got a point guard on a big out here, we should have a small advantage. Okay, if we've got a post on a point guard inside, we should have a small advantage. Okay, we might do like a hedge and roll the basket hard. So come out and hedge off this screen. So yeah, that's fine. Set it. Set it. Roll. Come hedge. Come hedge. Okay, so he hedges out. Okay, so now we're coming off the corner shooter and we're helping in here. So now he's wide open. So just this screen has created a small advantage so that if we can get the ball to the corner, now we have a big advantage. Okay? And so in any action that I'm doing... All right, you guys can sit down real quick, I think. All right, so any action that I'm doing offensively... Thanks, guys. Any action, whether it's a ball screen, hand up, etc., that's how I want my players to think. Okay? Is any action that we're going to run, we're going to create a small advantage off that action... Okay, and then we want to turn that small advantage into a big advantage and exploit that big advantage. All right, so that's the first one. Disorganize the defense. The second part, okay, Rick Majerus, all right, said offense is spacing, spacing is offense. Okay, so when I start out teaching, and I'll go through some of this after I kind of explain the four things, I'll go through a little bit more with the players. Okay, but when I teach offense and we focus on spacing, I use a drill that I believe I got from Mike, okay, with the, I'm sure you guys have seen it, the cones. So we divide, I divide it, I can't remember how Mike does it, but I divide the court into six segments, okay, we play four on four, you can only have one person in each segment. So that's how I teach spacing in the half court, okay, does everybody understand what I mean? I get some blank looks, so I don't know if you are familiar with Mike's drill or not. Somebody say yes or no. No? Okay. So essentially, uh, pardon me, Mike, if it's not 100% correct. So I essentially put out, I usually just put out four. You can put them on the baseline too. All right, and so I've got six segments now. One, this box. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, does that make sense? And so to teach spacing, I'll play four on four using that. So here, eight of you get out here. Please. Four white, four red. Give me one ball. Hustle, let's go. One more white, one more white. White. Somebody on the white. Or somebody go white. Thank you. All right, so uh, we'll go red ball this time. Okay, so all you're doing is playing four on four, half court, okay, except you can only have one person in each box at a time. Does that make sense? You guys see the segments or the rectangles, boxes? Yes. All right, so you spread out. So, see the cones? So right here, you're in, you're in one, you gotta scoot down to the baseline now. All right, so now you guys are, so he's in the far one, he's in the middle one, you're here. Does that make sense? And then he's here, and now you've got two open ones in the middle and on the far side. You got it now? All right, so I'll just play four on four, let him play one possession, go ahead, try to score. I just, Turnover. These two are in the same box at the same time. White ball. You two are in the same box. White ball, let's go. Once I put the ball in play, it's live. Play. Turnover. Same box. You two. Alright. So this is what happens whenever I play it. It starts out as a game that completely restricts movement because players aren't used to visualizing the court in this way. Okay? So it takes a minute for them to realize that the cones aren't out there to restrict movement, they're out there to guide movement. All right? And so hopefully, 
Here, somebody go start, start in that corner. Leave this one open. Go. Play. Uh, guard him. Right. Go again. Guard him, please. Make it a little harder. When I put it in play, it's live. Cut. Cut. Where's the open space right now? Where's the open space? Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Go back. Come here. Catch right here. Catch right here. Catch right here. Stop. Where's the open space? Yeah, cut there. Okay. So now as he cuts, hold on. Bring the ball back here. Bring the ball before the pass. Just cut. Stay. 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 All right. So now as he cuts through, now there's space in the middle for one of two things. Either you can cut towards the ball, okay, and we can pass and we can reverse the ball, or stay wide as you were. Stay wide. Come back here with the ball. Don't move. All right. Now, as he's cut through into the corner, now we've got room for middle penetration. Okay. So when I tell players when we're playing this, if you're going to penetrate, you need a two-box window. Okay. So he's got his box that he's in, and he's got the open one right here to get middle and then get to the basket. All right. So as he penetrates, go to the basket. Okay. Now... The other, the other players know they've got to stay wide because they can't come into that middle box, okay? Because then we'd have two people in the same box. All right, so do you guys at least understand the idea of what, what I'm trying to accomplish here? Okay, thanks, Mike, for that. All right, you guys can sit down. Actually, five of you stay, sorry. Five of you stay. All right, the other way I teach spacing, okay? So in terms of transition now, all right, is I have five lanes, okay? So when we're running the court, we've got five lanes. We've basically got the middle lane, okay? A little bit narrower than the, than the lane lines, okay? We've got what I call the guard lane, okay? Or the trailer lane, which is more or less on a court with a volleyball court, your volleyball court to your lane line, and then you've got your outside lanes, okay? So just stand five across. So one of you right here, one of you here. Yeah, spread out. Good, good, and then you get to the outside lane all the way out to the sideline. All right? So, in transition, we've got these five lanes. All right? Now, even though we're all in a different lane right now, if we run down court, five people coming down as one line, we still don't have great spacing. Three people can guard these five. Okay? Because they're relatively close together. All right? So not only do we want to talk about width of the court, but we want to talk about depth. Because as soon as... Corner. As soon as he gets down to the corner, okay, now we can have two people. He can either stay in the same lane or he can even move over into the outside line. They can be in the same lane in terms of the width of the court, okay, but now we have depth, okay? So now we have spacing here. So one person can't guard, what's your name? Emmanuel? How are you? Okay, so one person can't guard Emmanuel and alley -oop. All right, because we have spacing here. Even though, so we're going to, when, when we're talking about transition, go back, go back where you were, alley -oop. All right. So your basic first break is generally going to have either two people or three people. All right. So if we have two people, so step back, middle, step back, step back. Okay. We generally want to end up with Emmanuel and Chris, okay, so Emmanuel and Chris coming down the court, okay, we're wide, we've got spacing, they're going to put a lot of pressure on one defensive player here, okay, if we have three people coming down, scoot back, scoot back, we're generally going to be in this area, okay, so now we're going to spread the court, okay, we could, however, have three people coming down with Ali who could be in a little bit closer and a lot further down the court than the other two, then we still have spacing. Okay, so however we figure it out, okay, and generally we want to try to use the five lanes, okay, but I worry as much about depth as I do about width. All right, questions so far? All right, you guys can, don't go too far, but you guys can sit down for a second. So those are my first two things, okay, that I really try to emphasize. Every action we're going to do, we try to disorganize the defense. Okay, and then the second one is to be able to disorganize the defense, we have to have spacing. Okay, if, if we try to disorganize the defense over here with an on-ball screen, but then we have three people standing in the same spot, okay, it's easy to help off them 
it's easy to take away our action. All right. The third idea or concept that I really try to um, convince players and coaches of, all right, is you're most open when you first catch the ball. All right. So there's a reason why somebody passed you the ball. With only a few exceptions, most notably into the post, most people don't pass the ball to their teammates when their teammates are covered. All right. So if I'm Sorry, give me four. Two red, two white. Just give me a red and a white in the corner and a red and a white right here. Red can have the ball. Do you want that? There you go. All right. So right now, there's no reason, there's no advantage to passing the ball to the corner. He's no more open than we are right here, okay? But if he gets a step on his defender and he starts to help, now there's a reason we're going to pass the ball, okay? He's open, okay? Now, there's kind of two degrees of open, okay? So start your penetration on that side. This time you're going to help all the way to the middle. All right, so, yeah. So penetrate, we've got help, kick. Now. Let's pretend you're a three-point shooter. Okay? Now, when I'm talking small advantage, big advantage, this is a big advantage. Okay? If, especially if this is a shooter. If this is not a shooter, it's probably a small advantage. Okay? But if, if we've got shooters, this is a big advantage right here. Okay? He's, he's got all the time he needs to get a wide-open three-point shot. All right? So my team last year, I coached in Denmark last year. My team, we shot 57 percent at the rim within four feet of the basket we shot 38 39 percent from the three-point line and we shot 34 percent everywhere else all right so the best shots that we could get when my best player was my post player him at the rim was our number one option that that was the absolute best shot we could get because he shot over 60 percent himself and could get himself to the foul line the second best shot we could get my shooting guard from the three-point line. The third best shot we could get, my point guard from the three-point line. Okay, by percentages, points per shot, those were our best shots. Okay, so I had my starting lineup, essentially, I had five guys who shot over 37% from three. Okay, so we were running lots of stuff to try to take three-pointers. All right, so some of this might change with your personnel, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, but for me, big advantage. Okay, if any of my guys caught with this much space and they didn't shoot it, I was yelling at them. Okay, because there's no reason to pass this shot up if you're a shooter. Okay, now, start back over here. This time, you're just, you're just going to show a little bit on the, and then get back and recover. All right, so he beats him. We show a little bit in help, and on the kick, we're running out, and we're there to take away the shot. Okay, now, the way most offenses are run, he puts the ball into triple threat. Okay, he holds the ball, and now we wait for the next cut, and we pass, reverse. Okay, what I want players to see, bring it back here on the pass, show, show, show and help. Okay, so he comes. On this catch, to me, he's open. Okay, he's probably not open to shoot, especially if he's not a great shooter. Okay, but he has enough space, and he has a defensive player moving towards him. He has an advantage, small advantage. Okay, and so as he comes at him, let's say he's a little high in his closeouts, and let's say we rip and we go baseline, now he beats him, now we're probably going to be able to create a big advantage off this, okay, because we've got the weak side corner maybe, or the weak side post is now coming over to stop this, so now maybe we have the post, okay, over here for a layup, or their guard, they do a great job rotating with their guard off the opposite corner into the post, and now we've got the other shooter wide open in the opposite corner. Okay, so we've taken a, a small advantage, right? So we've got a small advantage here. Give him a ball back, right? He's not open, okay? He has a step, but if he goes to the basket all the way, don't even help, okay? We're still on it. This is a contested shot, okay? Maybe it's a good shot, maybe it's not. Kind of depends on who he is and who he is, okay? But he gets half a step, okay? He's still on his hip. He's guarding him. Okay, we get half a step in here to help a little bit, and on that kick out, so we've got small advantage, 
Again, close out, small advantage, rip and go baseline. And now we're turning in, I run over and help. Now we've got big advantage over there. All right? And so if we keep spacing and we keep the ball moving, we can turn that small advantage or that small advantage into a big advantage. But as soon as the pass comes here, help the same way again, and stop. As soon as he stops, go guard him. Pretend like he's a shooter. Guard him. Okay? As soon as he stops and holds the ball and tries to make a jab step, everybody else recovers. Now he's denying here. Help defense is ready. Their defense is set. They're in their shell. Now we have to start over. All right? So that's what I mean. When I say you're most open on the catch, that's what I'm trying to get players to do. Is on the catch, you're either open to shoot or if you're catching with that small advantage, you're looking to attack right away and to turn that small advantage into a big advantage. What happens most of the time, because players are taught to run plays, is he catches the ball and he holds it and he waits for the next cutter in the play. So he gives away that small advantage. And so the way that I look at things, okay, bring the ball back here. Let's say we ran an on-ball screen up here to get him his small advantage to create that small advantage. Okay, so we did one action. As soon as he holds the ball, we basically have to start over. Okay, so that means maybe he has to get the ball back, and then we run another screen, or maybe we have to go set a screen away, maybe we bring a post player, but we have to do something else. Okay, and we have to continue to do so. Every time we stop the ball and hold the ball and wait, we have to do something else to get open. Okay, so what I try to get players to understand, uh, passing the ball slightly open. Okay, so come off a step. Okay, right now, he penetrated, drew help, got him open. Okay, once he closes out, holds the ball, closes out, now if he wants to get open again, he has to do something else to get open, whether it's getting a screen from somebody else or whether it's him making an individual move. That's just inefficient to me. Okay, I don't want to rely on the Carmelo Anthony... 15 jab step shot. All right? I want, when we get a small opening, I want to keep moving the ball till we get a big opening. That's what, essentially, that's what the um, San Antonio Spurs do. Okay? As they do something, small opening, he drives baseline, kick it to the corner, big opening, three. They do a great job rotating to the opposite corner, take it away, one more pass. Okay? Good shot, great shot. Okay, to me, small advantage, big advantage. Okay, same idea. Okay, but as soon as we stop the ball, now we have to do something else to get open. Okay, there's no point in either you working hard coming off a screen or somebody working hard off dribble penetration or setting a screen for you or whatever it is that got you open to hold the ball because now you have to do something else to get open again. There's no point having to get open twice. Okay, but that's kind of how we teach players, at least in the States still, that's how we teach players is you get open once to catch the ball, and then you got to get open again if you want to shoot the ball or drive to the basket. Whereas, if you get open one time to catch the ball, keep the ball moving, and you don't have to get open again. All you have to do is keep the ball moving, all right, until you create the shot that you want to create. All right, that's the ball. Now, my fourth concept that goes into this, all right, the dribble is not an end. Okay? You use the dribble to create a pass or a shot. Alright? So we had big discussions last night on dribbling drills and ball handling, point guard playing, stuff like this. Alright? Every, dri every dribble has to end something else. Okay? The only other thing, that, there's basically four ways a dribble can end. Okay? It's a pass, a shot, a turnover, or you can dribble out the clock at the end of the game. Okay? There's really nothing else that's going to happen. Okay? So hopefully it's not a turnover. Okay? So that means you're dribbling into a pass or a shot. Okay? So if he catches the ball and he just starts to dribble in place, there's no point to it. Okay? He's not doing something to create a shot. He's not doing something to create a pass. Okay? That's just a waste. That's inefficient basketball. Alright? As soon as I'm, I just started coaching 8th grade girls who haven't, they're pretty inexperienced, so as soon as I inbound the ball here, just drive to the sideline. This is what they do. 
they put their head down, and they drive to the right corner or the right sideline. Okay, because that's all they know right now. Okay, and then they do it and pick up your dribble. Then they pick up their dribble, and now they're looking to see who they're going to pass the ball to. It's too late. Okay, because by the time he gets there, by the time he picks up his dribble, you know, the reason he's going sideways is because somebody's guarding him. Okay, so now he's used his dribble. He's on the sideline. All right, nobody's open. All right. He needs to, once you dribble, you need to keep your dribble alive until you pass or shoot. Because as soon as you drive in and just pick up your dribble and you don't know what to do, now you're in trouble. Okay, because now you can't help to create a passing lane. You're relying entirely on your teammates to get themselves open. Okay, you've made yourself less effective. All right, so uh, I'll take that. So those are my four basics, okay? And they all come back to small advantage, big advantage, okay? We're going to disorganize the defense. Offense is spacing. Spacing is offense. You're most open when you first catch the ball, and the dribble is not an end, all right? So everything, regardless of what we do, what are particular advantages, like last year I had a really strong post player, okay? So that enabled us to do some things to create advantages that were pretty simple, Okay? If you don't have a post player, if you've got a bunch of good guards, you can dribble drive motion, whatever it is, okay, you can apply these ideas to any kind of system, okay, depending on your strengths and weaknesses. All right, but that's essentially how I'm trying to teach offensive basketball. Okay, is create that small advantage, keep the ball moving so we get the big advantage. Once we get the big advantage, that should be a basket, okay, at least a good shot. Okay? So to me, a big advantage, all right, a layup, an open three-pointer, okay, as long as it's in, so I, it's a uh, rob, so range, open, and on balance, okay, that's, to me, that's what I determine for a shot, okay, so if we, if we pass the ball to somebody who's in their shooting range, they're open, and they're on balance, that's a big advantage, all right, uh, depending on the personnel, getting a switch and getting the ball into the post, that can be a big advantage. Okay? My small advantages are kind of like I showed here. Catching the ball with a little bit of space. Okay? Or, go set a screen. Here. Trail him on the cut. Okay? So we set the screen. He's curling to the basket. Trail him. Trail. Do you want to trail? Well, go start again. Start again. Start in the corner. Set a good screen. Trail him off the screen. You curl to the basket. Okay, so getting this, okay, him curling to the basket with a defensive player trailing him, to me that's a small advantage. Now, if he keeps going and he gets stuck and we end up here, now we're turning that into a big advantage pretty quickly. Okay, or if he ends up switching here and we end up switching that, now we've created a big advantage. Okay, we've taken a small advantage into a big advantage pretty quickly. Okay, so depending on personnel, depending on your uh, particular offensive philosophies, okay, you can determine what's a small advantage for you, what's a big advantage for you. Okay, like I said, I want, I want range, open, balance shots, and I want the ball at the rim. To me, those are big advantages. Small advantage, if I'm going towards the basket, even if I'm defended, I have a small advantage. Okay, if I'm dribbling the ball. If I've got a cut going to the basket, Okay, where I've got a little, at least a little bit of space between me and myself and my defender, I've got a small advantage. Okay, if I catch the ball, spot it up, okay, with just a little bit of space, short close out, I've got a small advantage. Okay, depending on who I am, if I catch the ball, let's say your post player, post up, play it however you want. Okay, so if I get a good pass in here, small advantage on the catch. As soon as he catches and does that, lets him slide behind, he's given away most of his advantage. Unless he's a dominant post player. Okay, if he's got great to back to the basket moves, okay, to the point where they're probably going to have to double team him, okay, and go double team him. All right. We've created a small advantage. As long as he has the ball, small advantage because somebody else is going to be open. Give him the ball back. As soon as he passes out, big advantage. He's either going to shoot this, you shooter, you guess. It's a yes or no answer. Sure. Okay. All right. So he's either going to shoot this, okay, or he's going to catch, let him close out, close out to take away the shot, and then just drive right by him. 
Okay? Yep. Force is help. Get the ball to the big guy inside, big advantage. Okay? So regardless of what action we start with, that's essentially what we're trying to accomplish. All right? Now, uh, we can... Sh here. You guys ready to run a little bit? Yeah. All right. Red team over there, white team here. Quickly, guys, quickly. Yeah, thanks. All right. So how to teach these concepts to young players, I start with two-on-one. Two-on-one is essentially what I'm trying to create in any situation. Whether I'm running an on-ball screen in the half court or whether we're penetrating in transition, ultimately I want to get to a two-on-one situation. That's Peth's rule. Jim Peth was my JV basketball coach when I was in high school in Sacramento, California. His rule, anytime there's a two-on-one, finish with a layup. Every two-on-one should become a one-on-o, -oh, you should get a layup. So in every action that I'm trying to run, I'm ultimately trying to create a two-on-one somewhere. All right, whether that's in a, against a zone, man, press, you know, transition, it, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I want to break down their defense to create that two-on-one. So because that's my ultimate goal, that's what I start with. Okay, so make your line right here. You guys start at half court and go that way. So yeah, you can be first in line. Everybody who's not first in line, get on to my left, please. All right, so that means... So give me two whites out here on this side of the court. Give me one red back there on defense. Give me one white back here on defense, please. Yeah. All right. So this is my most basic two-on-one drill that I like to play. I'm going to throw some of these drills in because I know some of you are just here to scribble down some drills that you can use at practice and you don't care about my philosophy at all. So that's fine. So I will try to appease both sides. So, we call this rabbit. I learned this at the camp that I went to when I was little. We played this. It was the most fun game we played at the entire camp. Uh, all it is is these two are going to cross half court. Once they cross half court, you're coming in. you got to go around the cone, okay, because kids cheat. All right, so you got to go around the cone. All right, so it's a two-on-one with the second defensive player coming back in. You guys good? Understood? Understood? All right. Um, the way... I the way I usually play, because uh, we use this kind of as our intensity game, if you will, okay, is all balls are live, okay, including a made basket, okay? So if you score and you get your own rebound, score again, all right? We'll play this real quick. Let's play to, uh, let's go first to four baskets, all right? Call out your score. If I don't hear you call out your score, you'll go back to zero. Does anybody have any questions? Don't be that guy. What? So once you cross with the ball, Emmanuel's coming, he runs around the cone. Now it's two on two. Once Red gets the ball, you two go to the end of the line, and Red, you're going that way. Yes, you have to get the ball. You can't rely on them scoring or the ball going out of bounds. Just don't hurt yourself against the wall, please. Questions, you guys good? Go. Zero. Call out your score, please. Oh, good hands. Go, let's go. There you go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Nice. Thank you. 
Jumper, no. Okay. All right, now guys, come over here, please. All right, so I just start with something that creates a two-on-one situation, okay? So that's a game I like, so that's a game I usually start with, all right? From there, I then talk to the players and ask questions, all right? So two-on-one, what's your biggest advantage? Any of you? But what's, what's the offense's big adv biggest advantage? There's always a guy open. You have a one-person advantage. Good. So that's your biggest advantage. What's your second biggest advantage? Somebody over there just said it. What'd you say? Oh, you said spacing too? Okay. Anybody else got an SP word? Speed, good. All right. So if you go slowly... The other team's going to get that second defensive player back, right? Then you lose your biggest advantage. Okay, so your second biggest advantage is speed, because what's the other part of speed? Which way are you guys going offensively? Yeah, forward. What way is the defensive player playing? Right, they have to move backwards, right? In transition, they're having to move backwards. It's a little less evident here because they get a head start to be back, but essentially they're moving okay backwards while you're going forwards okay so that's your other biggest advantage okay so as long as you guys take advantage of those right you go fast and you use your man advantage it's fairly easy to get a basket or at least a good shot right yes when was it harder to get a good shot very good when it was two on two all right so now once they get back and it's two on two how can you create a good shot in two on two there are, I believe, three options. Four options. What? Pick and roll is one. What else can you do two on two? A give and go. Good. What else can you do? Two more. What? Okay, yeah, you can post up. I'm driving kick. Sorry, I'm talking about like more team things than individual. But good idea. And a handoff. Okay, so there's four things you can do with only two players. Okay, you can set an on-ball screen, you can give and go, you can hand off, or you can dribble, penetrate, and kick. Okay, so in a two-on-two -two situation, those are my four basics. So after I play two-on-one, all right, now give me, uh, here, just give me four guys down here, red and, red and white. Give me one more white. We'll go white ball, white ball. All right, so we just played two-on-one, we just concentrated on on finishing in a two-on-one -on -one situation, keeping spacing, you know, they all did a good job, staying wide, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now they answered what are the four things that they can do two-on-two, -two, so now we're going to play two-on-two. -two. All right, and so, you know, this many kids, situation like this, I'd have it going at both baskets, et cetera, but just to help you guys out, we'll just play a little two-on-two -two right here. So remember, you've got four things you can do. Okay, let's go two baskets. Change of possession, check it to me. Oh, jumper. Outlet, 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 outlet. Play it. White ball, white ball. Look. White ball, white ball.
Play it, play it. Do something. That's good. So, how did you guys create your baskets? Pick and roll? Drive and kick, yeah. You guys did one drive and kick. Do you guys score once or twice? Twice. Twice. How do you guys get your most open shot? Do you remember? What? You said non ball for him and then pick and pop. That was your probably most open shot. Okay, so even in, honestly, I would never ideally want, if this was my team, want him setting a screen here. I, you know, I'm pretty traditional in my ball screens. I generally want my fours or fives setting the screens. I will say, however, that in the playoffs, we did go a lot with one, two ball screens last year, um, and it became very effective. However, most of the time, he would not be my guy setting a screen. However, he did set a screen. He picked, he popped, he got open. Got a shot. I think he missed it, but it was a wide open shot. All right. So even in a non-ideal situation, just a little bit of an action, okay, created an open shot. We used one action, and off of that, we created a big advantage, okay, an open shot that's in his range, and he was on balance. All right. Even, even though it's not the ideal or what I would have called out or told them to do, Okay, with you know a little guy setting an on-ball screen. Okay, it still just creates a little bit of confusion with the defense. It disorganizes the defense a little bit. They didn't do a good job talking on the screen. They didn't know exactly what they're going to do to defend the screen. So that became a big advantage. Okay, and so that's all we're trying to do. It's reinforce those ideas. So we play two on two. Okay, so then the next step is now we're going to play three on two. All right. So uh, let's just do the same. Uh, you guys want drills, huh? Uh, give me a, a line on the baseline. Give me three reds, so wing, middle, wing, and then three whites across from them. The rest of you guys can sit down. So three, when I say three reds on the baseline, three whites across from them. All right, so another transition drill that I use frequently. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to throw it to one of the three, whoever... What? Whoever I throw it to, if it's across from you, you're going to touch the baseline, then it's three and two. You guys have done it before? All right. All right, hold up. Line up again. So this time, what do we got? White on the baseline? Red out? Uh, let's go one more possession each. So reds on the baseline, reds on the baseline. All right, hold up. Now, good. This is what I want to show. Now, most kids are taught you have to bring the ball up in the middle. I, I know practices that I've watched this week, they spend all their time going three on O, player has to get here, jump stop, and then you pass and you score a layup and it never ever happens in a game. All right? So, last possession, who's the trailer getting in? Is that you? Okay, get back. You're out of the play. Give me the two on defense. This isn't where you guys were, but it'll work. So, we had the ball on the wing. The ball got brought up on the wing. So, you came and stopped the ball, right? Okay. Once we pass the ball here, what do we have? Stay here, stay. What do we have now? Two on one. Okay? That's all I want to do. If I can get the ball here, get the defense to play me, now we've got two on one. The only reason we didn't get an open shot is because it was a bad pass. Okay? He hit him in the foot. If it had been a good pass, he had a wide open three-point shot. Okay? Which 
depending on your philosophy, that might not be the shot that you want to take in a three-on-two fast break. Me, depending on who I have, that's a good shot. Okay, if it's, a, if it's my team last year, 40% three-point shooter, I'll take that all day in a three-on-two fast break. I'd rather have my guy shooting a 40% three-pointer than when he went to the basket and he shot 35% at the rim. Okay, so two-on-one, you know, now we can play this two-on-one situation. Pass to the corner, he's got a wide open three. Okay, he could have taken, bring the ball back here, could have taken one dribble, made sure the defense stayed on him, cut hard to the rim, take one dribble and pass it to him going to the rim. I would have gone the other way, but that's okay. All right, two-on-one situation. Okay, just by one, running the court, okay, and that's the first thing that I want players to understand. If you run in transition, the defense is already disorganized. You don't really have to do anything except for move the ball. We didn't have to set a screen. We didn't even really have to cut. Once we got the ball here, it was one pass, two pass, basically to stationary players, and we would have had a wide open shot if it was a good pass. Okay, no screens, anything. The defense is already disorganized because that's what transition basketball is. So if you can run down, that's the, that's the first way that I want my players to disorganize the defense is to beat them down court. If we can create a two-on-one, a three-on-two, a four-on-three, a five-on-four, anything where we have a numbers advantage, we've already disorganized the defense, and now offense is easy. As long as we move the ball, we get a good shot. Okay, if we walk the ball up, you know, and the defense is back and the defense is set, now we have to do something else, okay, to get us started. Okay, so that's what I want, that's what I want you guys to see Okay, transition, defense is already disorganized. Okay, so that's just another drill. So now, give me one more white. Oh wait, sorry, you're here. All right, so now we're gonna play three on three. Okay, so we played two on one, two on two. Okay, so now we're gonna play three on three. So what can you do in three on three that you couldn't do in two on two? Screen away, okay, or screen off the ball. Okay, so what were the things that you could do in two on two? Team wise. All right, so an on-ball screen, a dribble handoff, a driving kick. Which one are we forgetting? Oh, somebody said give and go. Is that the one we're forgetting? All right. Okay, so now we've got all of them. Okay, you can cut, you can screen, you can set on-ball screens, etc. So to start off, I'll just let them play three on three and just see what they do. Okay, so go ahead, just play. Change of possession outlet to me. Short. Outlet, white ball, white ball. There you go, white ball, let's go. Up top, white ball, white ball. Red ball, red ball. Now, off this, if I want to see something specific, or if I want to encourage them to do something, then I'm going to put in additional rules. Okay? So usually the first rules that I play with, they're doing a decent job of it. Okay? But... When you catch the ball, you've got a square, okay? And then two, when you pass the ball, I want a basket cut. Okay, so no, just screening away. Everything's gotta be basket cut first, and then you can do something off that, all right? You guys got it? Turnover, you gotta cut to the basket. That's what I just said. Outlet, outlet. Good cut, good cut. All right, now, let's say I want to work on dribble handoff situations because I haven't seen a dribble handoff yet today. All right, so. 
I'm going to tell the defense, defense, you get two points for a steal. Okay? Offense, you score, you get a basket. Defense, you get two points for a steal. All right? Open. Good. Press the ball. You get two points for a steal. Two points for a steal. There you go. Two. Press the ball, press the ball. Then you can tie your shoe. There you go. Four. Red's going to win just on steals. Oh, my. All right. So just by putting in the defensive rule that they get an extra point for the steal, okay, generally you're going to see defensive players get out, deny a little bit more, which then opens up either the handoff or a backdoor cut off a dribble handoff. Okay? Only got one, okay, but that's something that I'd play with if I want to see dribble handoffs. Another game that I use to teach uh, kind of dribble penetration and kick, all right, so this time offense, you can only catch the ball outside the three-point line, Okay, or if you're on a direct cut to the rim where you catch and finish. Okay, so if you catch, you dribble. If you catch with your back to the basket, if you catch running away from the basket, anything in the, in, inside the three-point line that doesn't lead directly to a layup is a turnover. Does that make sense? You can dribble inside the line. You can cut through. Okay, you just can't catch a pass in here. Understood? All right. Also, this time, change of possession, the new offense, all three touch half court. All right? Confirm understanding. Yes? All right. Half court, half court. Touch half court. Touch half court. Now go. My ball, touch half court. There you go. Red, touch half court, all three. You guys can do whatever you want on offense. You just can't catch the ball inside the three point line. Take. Oh. All right. Good, you hit that. What's your name? Chris. Chris, come here. All right. So I'm going to pick on Chris because he made the shot. So he's feeling good, so I can take him down a notch, right? Okay. So Chris caught the ball right here. What'd you do? You dribbled where? You dribbled straight to the basket? No. Not really. Did you, how many dribbles did you take? Five. Yep. Good guess. Good. Yeah. All right. Do you know where those five dribbles took you? Well, you got to the elbow eventually. Your first three took you nowhere. Then you made a crossover. Then you took one dribble and you got to the elbow. All right? So five dribbles to go this far. And you still weren't open, right? You ended up passing it. Okay? If you're going to use your dribble, go somewhere. All right? Don't just dribble because you don't know what to do. All right? It's white ball. You hit the shot. White ball. All three touch half court.
Okay, so now come back to the top. Let's talk about this. Okay, so come here, come here. So I, I showed you guys what I call Canada rules, which is Mike's game, right, with the uh, cones earlier. You guys remember what I'm talking about? Yes, no, yes, okay. Yeah. All right, so if he's coming, so let me put the cones out just to show you. So I like to use what I'll call Mike's game at the beginning, but the, once we get into this, it helps players to visualize because as soon as I referenced it, he knew exactly what he should have done. Okay? So I don't have to go into a big explanation and practice. I can just reference, remember Mike said, oh yeah, I got to go to the corner. Okay? Because right now, as soon as he starts to dribble, okay, first of all, he probably shouldn't even look to attack right here unless he's looking to set something up because he doesn't have that um, two box advantage. Okay, there's not a lot of spacing here. Okay, so unless he's a really quick and he can drive on a straight line, there's, there's not a lot of room right here. Okay, so that's our first problem. Okay, is he should be waiting for Chris to get to the corner. Chris to get to the corner. Very good. Now, we've got space for that drive. Okay, so just by introducing that game and then being able to reference that game, they know their mistake. Okay, and now we can keep playing. All right, so just this basic idea, and it's especially, so here, you have the ball. All right, this is where I find that this game comes in uh, the best, because if he's driving low, so he beats his man, and he's inside here, he doesn't have to move. Does that make sense? Because he's outside the box that he's going into. He's going into this middle box. So if, what was your name? Mark. So if Mark wants to help down, wide open. Okay, we already have space. Okay, whereas, drive high so you're going over the cone. Whereas if he's going this way, if the defense is on him, he's, now we need to spread out. Okay, so now if he spreads out, we've got the same open shot. Okay, or if the help defense stays with his man, now we have this two box that we can drive through. Okay, so that's the one that I find is really helpful because when the when the uh, penetration starts from the baseline or from the wing, okay, you can visualize. Okay, if he's inside of that line, all right, I can stay or maybe I can loop behind. If he's up high, all right, now I have to give him space and take my defensive player away. Okay, to keep that spacing. Okay, and then come in and help. So you drive, drive it. We draw the help, kick. Now, are you going to come up? One more pass. All right, small advantage to big advantage. That's all we're trying to do. Whether well, it's three on three, etc. All right. So, let's see. Um, this is going to be a red ball, right? There's a turnover. Red ball up top. Uh, yeah, put that up. Thanks, Chris. So, now let's say everybody's doing like Chris was doing and we're just putting the ball on the ground and we're dribbling too much. All right, so I'm going to say, you know, everybody, you only get two dribbles on each catch. So I'm just going to limit the dribbles. I limit it to two because I'm still allowing them to set a ball screen, and I don't want to build the habit of coming off a ball screen, taking one dribble and picking it up. Okay, so if I catch here, and he comes to set a ball screen for me, okay, I don't want to get in the habit of one and pick it up, because uh, children love to do that anyway, and that's one of the habits that I try to break the most. All right, so if we, at least if I let, let him use two dribbles, now I can use that second dribble either to create my shot or create a better passing lane. Okay, so that's why I generally, if I'm allowing them to set ball screens, that's why I'll limit it to two dribbles instead of one. Okay, if I really want to focus on ball movement or screening, excuse me, off the ball screens, then I'll just play no dribble, okay, which takes away the opportunity for an on-ball screen. All right, so on every catch, you can have two dribbles. All right? White ball, touch off court.
Ve bo, ve bo. There you go. Red ball top. Let's go one more. Half court, half court. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why'd you dribble? Huh? Right? Because all, all you did is you didn't go anywhere. You just dribble because you didn't know what else to do, right? Okay, just hold the ball or go somewhere. All right? There you go. Let's try to get a little bit better shot. Good idea, good idea. Red ball, red ball. Give me one more red and one more right. White. Line up uh, red, white, red, white, uh, right here on the backboard. All right, so we play three on three. Change the rules a little bit, try to emphasize different things. Okay, so now we're going to play a four on four transition game. Okay, so you guys are going to line up, line up right here. Uh, red, white, red, white, red, white. Face the backboard. Ball's in front. The person with the ball is in front. Then I need a white player. Then a red. White. Good. You got it? All right. Now, all we're going to do is start. It's just going to be a tip drill. So you're going to throw it off. Next person's going to catch in the air tip. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Good enthusiasm, though. All right. So they're just going to throw it off the glass. Okay. When I say go, whoever gets the next ball, you're taking off and you're trying to score down there. Okay? In transition. Four on four in transition. Do you guys understand that? Yes? Go ahead and start. Catch it in the air. It's a tip drill. Catch it and jump. Jump. Come on, guys. Go! Play it, play it. All right, line it up again, line it up again. Play it, A. You guys are going back and forth until somebody scores. So if you go down there and it's a missed basket, you bring it it's until a basket. All right, now, so what happened down here? Why, why did we have to work that hard for a basket? Do you guys remember? Spacing is one reason. Do you know why else? Now they, once they got stuck, they moved pretty well. We passed the ball up ahead, okay, and we caught the ball right here, and then we held it, held it, held it, held it. If you had caught and gone baseline, you had an advantage. Okay, but we caught and held, held, then we reversed, then we set screen, etc., etc., etc. Okay, try to get the ball down the court. Okay, and try to get the basket, okay, before the defense is set. All right, go. Go. Play it, play it, play it. Don't just stand, do something. Line up one more time. Go! 
There you go. Let's talk about two things on that possession. First thing, the positive. Okay, how do you guys get an open shot? Yeah, did anybody do anything to get your first shot? You, you ended up with a shot right here, right? One of you guys took a shot from here to start off? Yeah, how did you get that shot? No. You guys didn't do anything. That's my point. Yeah, there's three passes. One long pass, drew the defense all the way back into the key. Second pass, third pass, shot. Okay, at the time that you shot, okay, you guys looked like a shell drill. Okay, we had one person here, one person there, one person in the corner, one person in the corner, all four people stationary. Okay, just by making one long pass, forcing the defense to sprint back into the key, and then moving the ball before we got defended, we got an open shot. Okay, now whether this is the shot that you want in transition or not, that's debatable. Okay, but simply by moving the ball and spreading out the court without having to do anything else, open shot. Okay, good offensive possession. Now, what was the bad thing that happened? It ended up leading to a basket, but what was... What? No. So when you drove, you made you had to pass out for the jump shot, right? Ultimately, you got too deep. Make that pass early. So I don't want to go play hot defense, right? So get in the corner, be my shooter. Okay. So Manuel's guarding. What's your name in the corner? Matt. Okay. So Manuel's guarding Matt. As soon as I see a Manuel come to me, I don't want to get all the way to his body, jump up in the air, and try to throw a pass over him out to the corner. Okay, right now, okay, as soon as he, so start outside the key, take one step towards me. Right now, he's open. Okay, whoever was guarding the ball was already here anyway. Okay, so for me to get a shot at this point, I'm going to have to do something pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to have to split defensive players. I'm going to have to make a tough shot. Okay, but this is an easy pass. Okay, if I make an easy pass out here, that's a wide open jump shot. Okay, this is small advantage, big advantage. Okay, this is good shot, great shot. Okay, yeah, I could probably stop and shoot a pull-up jumper here, you know, if I can jump. All right, I might be able to try to split in between here and get off a tough shot. Maybe I get fouled. All right, I have a small advantage, but as soon as he takes that one step into the key, okay, and I pass out here, wide open, great shot. Okay, or big advantage. Okay, because even if he's not a shooter, okay, Emmanuel has to sprint out to close out to the ball. Now maybe he can drive in baseline. Okay, so I want, as soon as I see that help coming, I want to make that pass early. I don't want to drive all the way into his body and now try to pass it out when I'm covered. Okay, I want to make the easy play. Too many times, okay, our plays are designed in ways that we have to create hard plays or make hard shots, or make hard passes. You know, even my favorite offense to use as the example, okay, a flex offense, okay, I catch the ball, I mean, every team in Utah does this, they come up, they catch, they're not going to shoot it because they're waiting for a layup, but that means I'm defended. It means that if I can put good ball pressure, good ball pressure, pretend like you're playing defense. That's defense? Mike, you got a lot of work up here. Play defense. Steal the ball from me. How's that? Steal the ball from me. Steal the ball from me. Come on. Do you know how old I am? Yeah. Chris, you can play, right? Thank you. All right. So even if... Go screen Emmanuel. Don't let him get through. And you come across the middle, all right? Go set screen. So even if he's wide open, play defense. 
If I have ball pressure here, this is still a relatively hard pass. Okay? Now, a good player is going to be able to make a good pass. All right? But if he's playing good ball pressure, especially, here you get out, especially somebody my size or bigger, and I'm trying to make that pass, now it's much more difficult, okay, to get it there. All right? I have to do something. I can't, I can't just make an easy pass, right? I have to get his hands out of a passing lane, okay? I have to make sure that the next defensive player isn't going to steal this when I throw it, that Emmanuel's not going to steal that pass, all right? I have to, it, it's a harder pass than if, stand in the corner. You can guard me, that's fine. Emmanuel takes one step towards me, then that pass. Okay, but that's how we design plays, are to make these hard passes, are to get me to catch the ball, to wait, wait, wait. Somebody go set a screen on Emmanuel. Somebody set a screen on Emmanuel. Chris, go set a screen on Emmanuel, please. Okay, and now I have to try, and by the time I get that passing lane, it's too late. Okay, and that's what plays are designed to get. Okay, that's, that's the whole goal is to be able to make, but it's still, by the time I create that lane, half the time I'm late, and now, instead of him getting a wide open layup, all right, he catches the ball, Emmanuel's here, and now we're taking our chances. Can he score over him? Can he draw a foul? Et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you get a call, sometimes you don't. Okay, but that's, you know, just one example. But in general, that's kind of how plays are designed. I catch the ball, I wait for something to happen, so now my defense is guarding me, I'm tightly contested, and now I have to create that passing lane, or I have to take one dribble to create that passing lane, and that messes up the rhythm of the offense. It messes up the speed of the offense. It, it takes from him having to go back, set a good screen, really pin Emmanuel. Don't let him get through. Right? Go. Set a screen. So right now, he's really open, but by the time I get there, it went from the big... Oops. Come on, you fouled me. Big advantage to a small advantage. Okay, he was open off the cut, wide open at the rim, exactly what we want. But because I have to try to create that passing lane, and I'm a second late, now Emmanuel's recovered. Now we still have a small advantage because we've got the ball, you know, two feet from the basket. Okay, but we got rid of the big advantage. All right, so that was a four on three transition, so now I'd play four on four. All right, and usually I'd either play just straight regular four on four, or I play Mike's rules so that they see the spacing, okay? Because that's probably my favorite game, all right? Then I'd go into five-on-five five transition. So give me two more. What, kind of, what team are you on? There you go. All right, so we're going to go white. You're shooting a free throw. Line up like it's a free throw attempt. Yep. You never try to miss a free throw. I never want... Okay, so he asked if he should make the free throw. Okay, I never want to do a drill that's going to incorporate a bad habit. So I would never start this drill and say, hey, miss a free throw. If I want a missed free throw, I'll shoot it myself. Okay, I don't want him practicing missing shots. All right? Um, so make or miss, we're transitioned to that end. All right? So usually a game like this, I'll play to 11. You get one for a made free throw. You get two for a basket, three for a three-pointer, just like a game. All right? Make or miss, transition to the other end. Offensive rebound. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If you get an offensive rebound, score. It's live. I should have said that. Okay? So let's say it that way. Off the shot, the ball's live. Okay? Offense, you get it, you score. Defense, you get it, or a made shot, transition to the other end. Defense, you might want to try boxing out a little bit. Stop, 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 stop. What happens in a game on a made shot? Start again. Just imagine we're playing a game. Pressure now. Can you go two for three? There you go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Play it, play it. Play it to the basket. Stop, stop, stop. Do any of you want to score? First, ball. You dribble down, he turned your back on you, and you still pass the ball, okay? And you still cut away, all right? You were open if you drove to the basket, or you were open on a cut to the basket because he turned his back, and then he was out of position to go to cut. You caught the ball wide open, never even looked at the basket, okay? The goal here is to score. The goal is not to run good offense, okay? If you catch the ball here open, if you're not comfortable shooting this, then drive to the basket, okay? Or at least... Okay, drive, dribble hand off here so he can get open. Okay, but when you catch the ball and hold, now their defense that was broken or disorganized, okay, gets to recover and match up. All right, somebody on the red team, shoot it. Free throw, free throw. Guys, it's a transition drill, okay, transition, also known as a fast break. Key word being fast. Go. Red, shoot again. See if somebody can box out. Strong with the ball. Red, shoot again. Strong with the ball. Easy. All right. Now, White, relax. You good? White, what happened? Okay, good point. Once they got on the half court, they were going sideline side to sideline. Nobody's actually going to the basket. What happened before that? Why did they have five people back on defense on a missed free throw? It was slow. Why was it slow? Okay. Not only did you dribble up the court, but what else did you do? Do you know specifically how you slowed it down? It took you four dribbles to go forwards. All right? So you got the rebound here. Dribble, dribble, dribble dribble, and then you went forwards. Okay, so you're clearing space. I understand. Okay, so I'm going to use a rule that Mike taught me last night. All right, so go again. So once you get the rebound, your first dribble or pass, whichever comes first, has to be up the court. All right? First pass or dribble, whichever comes first, get inside. Okay, first pass or dribble has to be towards your offensive basket. Okay, All right. What did you see as you were running down the ball, down the court with the ball? Okay. What was the defense? If nobody was open, what was the defense? Oh, I should, I should clarify. When I ask you guys questions, okay, I'm not accusing you. Okay, I'm trying to help you. 
Okay, so I'm just asking, I, I literally want to know what you saw going down the court, see if you saw the same thing as me, and then we can talk about what should have happened. All right, so what'd you see? Okay. Okay, what was the defense? Okay, so you, well, let's start with this. So you had three teammates at the court, right? We agree on that. Where were they? Yep, all three were outside of three. You had one there, two here. Okay, so where's the defense? But outside of where? Yeah, okay. So all three defensive players were kind of wide. That's why you didn't have a pass up to either side. Okay, so if they're already going to spread out, even when you have the ball here, and they're going to guard that corner person all the way out there, what's your advantage? What? Yeah, the middle of the court either to attack yourself or if he's trailing with you what was his name? Donald okay set a drag screen right here so you're trailing come okay everybody, everybody spread out where you were spread out where you were I'll be what was your name again? Matt I'll be Matt no not you you're back here you were trailing alright you're in the corner Chris all the way so if the defense is going to spread, you are one more step out. You were in help, but you are one more step. Okay, if the defense wants to spread this far out in transition, we're playing two-on-two two in the middle of the key, right? Come set a drag screen for me, so come set the on-ball. As I go this way, okay, roll hard, okay? Now we should have something because there's no help here, okay? So we should be able, it basically goes back to everybody step all the way off the court, Except for those four, same four. Okay, step all the way. We're just playing two on two, just like we did the first drill. Does that make sense? Okay, if they want to spread all the way out, if they want to guard shooters all the way out to the three point line, that's awesome. That means we can play two on two right here. Okay, that's easy. Okay, two on two, okay, you have a big advantage. You should be able to score two on two most of the time, or at least get a good shot. All right, does that make sense? All right, now, because I know everybody likes plays, okay, I will end by showing a couple of the things that we did last year, okay, that used these ideas, okay, in a more, I guess, structured, if you will, sense. So, you're fine there. Who's my, which one of you is my post player? Okay, go get, get on the block. You be my trailer. You're right here. Okay, so again, easy way to create a small advantage if you have a post player. All we did was dribble him. Okay, you're going to go to the top. You're just setting a screen basically on the free throw line for him to come off. Okay, and we're just entering the ball right here. Okay, now you're going to pop out. You're running through. Okay, small advantage right now. Okay, we've got the ball on the block to a good post player. Small advantage, okay. You come up corner, you go corner, okay. Trailer, you're ready to crash, okay. Now we just see how they want to guard it. Do they want to play one-on-one -on -one with a small advantage? We'll probably take that. We'll go one-on-one, -on -one, okay, and take our chances that with one post move, okay, we can get to the rim and either draw a foul or get a basket. Okay, if they want to help or they want a double team, he wants to come double, now we've got the kick out. Okay, wide open, range open, balance. Okay, big advantage. Okay, if they do a great job, let's say that they're well schooled in their rotations, so they double here, next man's coming over, now we just have to move the ball. All right, we've got three on two on that side. What's probably going to work best is if we get one to cut to the basket. Take a defender with you. Now we've got two on one. Hold on, you rotated here. You're in the double team. We're all walking right now. Okay, so he came here. Cut to the basket. No, you're on the ball. You're on here. That's your man. Okay, so yeah. Okay, you go with him. So now when we make this one more pass, now we've got two on one. Make the next pass. Good shot, great shot. If he does a great job closing out, then we've got inside layup. Okay, if we move the ball quickly, Okay, our passing or the ball movement should move faster than their defense can rotate. 
But as soon as we pass it to somebody, pass it to Chris, and Chris holds it, instead of making that next pass, get the clothes out, get to your man, recover to your man, recover to your man. Now we have to start over. Okay, now we have to do something else to get somebody open. He either has to go one-on-one, -on -one, okay, or somebody has to come a ball screen, or maybe we pass here, screen away. We have to do something else, okay? Next, easiest way to create something, all right, just give me a high ball screen. You're fine there, spread out. Here, go corner, go corner. Okay, Chris, Chris can have the ball screen, okay? So just a high ball screen. Okay, we set it, roll, and then again, all we're doing is seeing how the defense is going to play. Okay, are they going to switch? Are they going to hedge? Are they going to trap? Whatever they do, assuming that if we run ball screens, we're good at them and we know how to react to defense, okay, we're going to get something out of it. Okay, so if they want to try to hedge and recover, we take it wide, Emmanuel steps out, hedge, roll the basket, Come behind. All right, so they rotate. Who's the open man? Pass. Now he's going to run out to close out. Emmanuel's trying to recover. Stay stay under the rim. Okay? And now we've either got the open shot on the wing or we've got the dump down into the post that we were looking to get the ball to off the roll anyway. Okay? With an advantage, a small advantage, because if he's smart, Emmanuel's trailing him. Here, let me be you. Right? So Emmanuel's trailing. So start there and run down. Right? So I rolled to the basket. The ball got swung. I'm not just going to let Emmanuel come and guard me. Right? Get here and take this away. Take this away. Okay? I'm going to fight him for deep position. So when the ball goes there and Emmanuel's trailing me, I'm going to meet him and create this opening. So now, to me, this is a big, big opening, a big advantage. Okay? If I can catch the ball right here and turn and finish. Okay, if I let him come guard me, right, he pushes me out here, and I catch, okay, I still probably have a small advantage, okay, because I can still work against his momentum, okay, but I've given up my big advantage if I'm strong, if I know how to post inside, all right. Third one I'll show you, this was our play that we went to almost exclusively towards the end of the season, because teams just pressured the crap out of us. So post get the elbows. So all we do, we, we're trying to get our best player basically to catch the ball at the CA over there. Okay, so you're going to run over top. You're going to run below, run over top. And again, all we're trying to see is how they're going. If they're going to trail him, we make this pass early. Okay, and he's catching. Here, let me be you. Pass the ball there. Come trail me. All right pass it early. As soon as I get past him, pass. So he's trailing me off this. We're just looking as soon as I get past him. All right. He's trailing. I want to catch, and we're going right away, and this is our best player looking to get to the rim. All right. So once they do that one time, then they're going to go underneath. Okay, these. And so now we catch the ball. Oops. Okay. Small advantage. We usually didn't shoot this. All right. You guys, you're setting a back screen. Go to the basket. That's just dummy motion. Basket and then clear out. And now you guys are coming to set a stagger. Here. Second one. And again, we ran this to make them believe that this is what we wanted to use. But all we wanted to do was get this baseline drive for my best player. So they'd see a stagger coming. He'd jump it. And we're looking for this penetration. And now we have everybody lifted. We've got shooter, shooter, and then shooter was coming behind, and our post was kind of filling down the middle of the lane. All right? So it's just a bunch of dummy motion, okay, to get exactly what we want, which is a small advantage, okay, because he's jumping up to not allow me to get to this screen. So he's giving me a small advantage to the baseline. All right? And now we're seeing what happens. If he wants to rotate to me here, fill down, fill, I, I want to dunk. I don't want a free throw line jump shot. Okay? And we'd get a dunk right there. If he stayed up, which they usually stayed up, if the help was going to come, it's usually coming from the opposite corner. All right? 
So now we make this pass. If he rotates down, we make one more pass. Okay, and we're going open shot. Okay, and it's all it's all just dirty motion into a single action. And then once we get that single action, it's about ball movement, keeping the force spaced, and taking advantage of that small advantage, trying to exploit it, and make it into a big advantage. All right. Good on timing. Questions. We've got two minutes of questions. Questions? Oh, yeah. I got you. So, that was one of the problems that we had because we, we had another play. And actually, we had that on a game winning shot where my 17 year old passed up a game winning shot because I, I drew up a play that had two options. And so, our 17 year old caught the ball was our first option. He was a 39% three-point shooter. And he passed up an open shot because he was under the impression that we wanted to get the ball to the second option, who was our 40% three-point shooter. And so after the game, I was like, why'd you pass it up? He's like, oh, I thought that's what you wanted. So there is that element, right? We had two options because we had five seconds and we needed to get one of them. So I wanted to back up to the first option, okay? But I guess I didn't explain it well. But to get more to your point, in a play like this, there are times if I'm going to run a, a, you know, a play like the second one where we're trying to get it to a certain player to set up a certain thing, where it's a matter of, all right, we're starting with this action to try to get the ball here, and essentially once we get the ball okay, to Dom here, that's where the plays really start. That's where we're going. So all this, you know, the screen up top, the back cut, if he's wide open, pass it to him. Okay, but really we're trying to get the ball right here with some motion, and then we're looking to exploit off that. So it's kind of a fine balance. You know, I always tell players, you know, the goal is to score, right? So if we're trying to run a play, and, you know, it takes screen here, screen there, screen there, and then now we're really doing what we're trying to do, yeah, but if you're open before that, you know, time and uh, situation depending, but... If you're open and it's a good shot, then take it. So that's why I start I start the season without a lot of structure. You know, so like like with my middle school team right now, we haven't talked about a play, we haven't talked about positions, we haven't talked about anything. All we do is play two on one, two on two, three on two, three on three. And all I'm trying to do is get that concept of if you're open, go. If you're open, shoot. Take advantage of the opportunity. Take advantage of the opportunity. Then once we get in a little bit later, we need a little bit of strategy, you know, especially with an older team, you know, we put in some plays, they have that as their background, okay, or as their kind of mindset, as opposed to starting the season with, okay, this is the play we're going to run, play number one, play number two, play number three, oh yeah, but if you're open before we get to this, then yeah, you can shoot it. So I try to build the mentality of the mindset first, and then once I've built that, then I kind of layer on a little bit more structure, especially with, you know, like older professional teams where, you know, we need a little bit of motion. You know, we can't just run down and run a high ball screen every time because the defense knows how to adjust to it and they can force things. So we try to get a little bit of motion in before we say, I don't like, I showed it as just a high ball screen, but most of the time I do something into a high ball screen, um, usually something that gets a back door cut first. So if we can get a layup, we take it. And if not, and that way, if I catch on the wing here, I need to wait for a screen anyway. You know, so if I know that ultimately I'm going to catch, let me see the ball, Chris. Right, so if I catch the ball here and I know I'm getting a ball screen, I need to wait a second anyway. Right, I'm not going to just catch and go. Now, if we run something and Dom caught the ball here and he was wide open for a shot, then I'll, by all means, he was shooting it. Okay, but assuming, you know, he's our best player, they don't want him to catch the ball open, you know, he's having to catch out here square up. Now we run something, 
We look for it, and then we get the ball screen because that time where we ran the back screen gives the screener time to get here to set the screen, and now we're good to go. Does that kind of answer your question? So there is, especially if you're running a ball screen off a catch, there is sometimes where you're not always going to take advantage of a small advantage. You've got to wait for somebody to come set the screen so that you can create that small advantage. Um, but, you know, in general, I'm just trying to play off that idea of small advantage.